Hello, my name is Manuel de Ribeiro and I'm a PhD student at EP et al. Today, I will present our work entitled Does Platform Migration Harm the Effectiveness of Content Moderation? Evidence from our The Donalds and our Incels. This is joint work with Shagun, Savas, Jimmy, Emiliano, Gianluca, and Bob, my advisor. Okay, so one of the ways people organize themselves in the internet are in online communities, which oftentimes inhabit platforms such as Reddit or Facebook groups. Users often participate in multiple online communities as active members who contribute to the community or as someone who only passively consumes content there. This graph represents how users might be connected to multiple communities in a given platform, for example, in Reddit. It can be that a given user is active in multiple subreddits, right? At times, online platforms consider that an online community is problematic, and then they ban it. However, it is naive to believe that banning a community is a silver bullet. More specifically, two concerns arise. First, it could be that users from the banned community may continue to be active in the same platform. In that scenario, problematic behavior may migrate to other existing or newly created communities in the same platform. Previous work has largely addressed this concern, showing that in Reddit, for example, users from banned online communities drastically reduce their usage of hate speech and that counteractions taken by uh, these users, for example, trying to create new communities, uh, were promptly neutralized. However, it could be that these users abandon the, plat the, the platform altogether and migrate to an alternate platform. Uh, this alternative platform may have laxer moderation policies or may be entirely owned by the members of the community. And this is the scenario that we explore in this paper. And we focus on two communities where this happened. The first community is R the Donald, an extremely popular subreddit in support of uh, Donald Trump created during his 2015 campaign. The Donald was quarantined in June 26, 2019, and back then the community created a backup website called the Donald.win. Then, in early 2020, Reddit completely locked the Donald, preventing users from posting uh, in the subreddit. Uh, nonetheless, the pinned post in the community was a link to the backup website, right? So users promptly flocked to the, to the new website. A second community with a similar story is R Incels. It was created in 2013, but went on to grow in popularity only years later, uh, yeah, around 2016. In 2017, the subreddit was quarantined, and shortly after, it was banned. Uh, users in the community organized uh, themselves around Discord chats and newly created subreddits and orchestrated a migration to incels.co, a standalone message board style website. Given these communities, we ask, how have these toxic communities progressed after migrating to, to different platforms? And here we focus on two dimensions. Uh, we analyze whether these communities retain their activity levels and the capacity of uh, attracting new members and so on. And we analyze whether the communities became more toxic or ideologically radical following the migration. Okay, but how do we measure those things? To measure their activity, we look uh, at the amount of distinct posts, uh, distinct users posting, and at the number of newcomers they had before and after the migration. And uh, to measure radicalization, we look at text-derived signals uh, that would indicate radicalization in these communities. For this presentation, we focus on a subset of the signals that we look in the paper, but, uh, and they are a machine learning derived toxicity score, we use the perspective API, and first and third person plural pronouns, whose increase has been linked with radicalization in, in previous work. Right. So we know what signals we're looking at, but how do we measure the change? And the answer to that question is that the bulk of our analysis follow a regression discontinuity design. We compare the aforementioned signals before and after the migration with a linear model that I'm showing here, but that I'll explain from the ground up so it's clear. We begin with a time series of one of the variables of interest, which is y in the plot, through, uh, through time, right? Because it's a time series, which is x. 
And in here, y could be anything, right? Y could be, for example, the number of posts. And this time series is centered around the migration date, where x equals 0. Okay? So we could fit a simple linear regression in this data, and we would obtain a slope alpha 0 here and an intercept beta 0. But what we're really interested in is in distinguishing what changed after the migration. And for that, we introduce a third variable in our regression, an indicator variable, which here we're calling yt. Uh, this variable equals 0 before the migration and 1 after the migration. To avoid uh, the noise in the, uh, right around the migration, we consider a grace period of 15 days uh, before and after the bend happened. Uh, I represent this, this period here by uh, fading some of the dots around the migration here. Uh, and then using the indicator variable, we can rewrite our model to allow for a change in slope uh, and a change in, in intercept. And these are alpha and beta respectively without the zero uh, that happen after the migration and the geometric interpretation is, is is this one so i'm repeating myself but basically alpha is how much the two lines are distant from each other in the moment of the migration and beta is the the change in angle that happens following the migration and, and these are the, the values we're interested in right we're interested in what changed after the migration so using this methodology, we analyze the change in activity using the different signals we previously talked about. And for the presentation, I will focus in one of the two communities studied, which is R. The Donald. And here you can see the plots, although they're a bit hidden. But basically, on the x-axis, we have the dates centered around the migration. On the y-axis, we have the values for the signals. And then on top of each plot, we show alpha, how much the change uh, like the change in the intercept post-migration, and beta, the change in slope. And we mark the significant uh, results with stars, right? So this will be repeated throughout many of the results, so it's better to explain it now. So we find that there is a significant decrease in newcomers, posts, and users following the migration to the new platform. However, interestingly, if we consider the number of posts per user, we find that they actually increase quite substantially, going from around 3.8 in the pre-migration times to 5. Note that in the plot, we highlight the killing of George Floyd with a red X, uh, since we found it to be associated with a spike in activity uh, in, in the Donald. We re-ran this analysis excluding data from after this event and found largely the same results. Okay, so similarly, we can also run the analysis with the radicalization-related signals previously described. In here, uh, we find an increase in the signals overall. So we find an increase in toxicity and, uh, in, in first-person plural pronouns and in third-person plural pronouns. Uh, however, the pronouns increased in very distinct ways, right? So after the ban, there was a sudden increase in first-person plural pronouns, suggesting a focus on the in-group, but eventually there was a decrease, and then the, their usage returned to pre-intervention levels. On the contrary, for third-person plural pronouns, we find that there was a sudden decrease following the ban and a continuous increase as time went by. So I just showed you some hopefully interesting community-level analysis, right? But what's driving the change is not entirely clear. For example, we found that posts per user increased after the migration, but it could be that this was due to self-selection, that is, the users who were active were the ones that migrated, or it could be because of behavior change, that is, the users that migrated eventually became more active. Importantly, these two hypotheses differ in their interpretation. If users became more active or more toxic, after migration, there is, that is, if there is behavior change, it could be that the community became more radicalized and that the subset of users ignited by the moderation measure uh, could cause even more harm. However, if this increase were only due to self-selection, we might consider the moderation measure successful in decreasing the activity and the reach of the community. After all, basically what happened is that a subset of very active users migrated but the overall activity in the community decreased. And we distinguish between these two by matching users in both platforms. That is, we find users with the same username 
and assume that they are the same person and compare their activity before and after the migration. Uh, to conveniently comp compress each user into a single data point, we use, um, we consider for each signal of interest, the log two ratio of the activity in the second platform and the activity in the first platform. For example, if the log two ratio of the number of posts uh, per user, per, per given user is two, it means that the user posted twice as much in platform two when compared to platform one, right? If this log ratio was half, it means that it posted twice as less. So it's, it's pretty intuitive. Here, we show the results for the posts as well as for the text derived signals. We find that the change in activity was likely due to self-selection. Although there was an increase in posts per user, uh, the matched users actually posted less in the platform, right? So the number of posts per users increased, but this was because the users who migrated were more active, not because uh, users migrated and then became more active. Uh, however, for the radicalization related signals, we find that the increases persisted even after we matched users, suggesting that there was a real behavior change. Uh, change. There is like we, we met, the, the, the users migrated and then became more toxic and started using these pronouns more. more. So I'll finish with some takeaways. <laughs> so first, our work highlights that moderation interventions do not happen in a vacuum and that therefore platforms should consider the impact of their decisions in our broader information ecosystem. Second, our results suggest that banning a community may result in a smaller but more extreme community elsewhere, right? Because there is behavior change in that regards. And in that context, we argue that if communities ought to be banned, platforms should do it before they grow large. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. And please reach out if you're interested and if you want to talk about this work. Thanks.